Thank you so much for joining us today on UME Radio. We're back with Migration Matters, and there's a story that really touched my heart, and I just want to talk about it today, and I hope it touches you too, and I hope that by sharing this story, it helps us open our minds to be kinder to people who have gone through um, tragedy and um, periods of their lives that they had no control over and they would have rather not have lived, you know? Um, in this particular story, we're just sharing how um, overcomers of, uh, of trafficking have their healing process and their overcoming process disrupted by stigma and rejection that they receive after returning from the tragedy. Just imagine, right? Somebody having gone through the, this kind of terror return only to to be rejected and 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 to have to be stigmatized you know we, we all have to become mindful of ourselves but let's let's go to the story for survivors of trafficking overcoming stigma and rejection upon return is another hurdle Chimid, chimidu and bear with me please because these names sometimes are difficult to pronounce chinidu thought she left nigeria to meet her boyfriend in germany but was trafficked to as trafficked to be a sex worker in Libya. And this story was published by IOM, that's the International Organization for Migration. Um, the storyteller it was published on August 29, 2022. It was not easy starting all over again. It was not easy then, but I have overcome things like that. I'm okay. I'm getting better. She says, Chinidu sits at her sewing machine, surrounded by piles of colorful fabrics and rolls of thread. She is finishing the seams on a flowery dress at a small tailor shop, tailoring shop in a busy commercial district in Benin City in southern Nigeria. In the six months, six months she has worked here, she has built up a clientele and is in the process of working off debts accrued in 2018 when she was deceived with a promise of better work and marriage. Shinidu was determined to leave and was blindsided by the man who posed as her boyfriend, promising her a married life with, with him in Germany. All she had to do was to get on a bus and follow the instructions of connection men. Instead of taking her straight to Germany, as she was made to believe, Chinidu was taken to Libya, where the trafficker threatened to sell her if she didn't pay up. I called the so-called boyfriend and said, look what I'm going through. But that was the end of the end of the both of us. I never heard from him again, Chinidu recall, recalls. Pressured by her traffic, traffickers to pay to avoid being sold, Chinidu reached out to her mother for help. She sent me NGN 90,000, just over 200 US dollars at the moment. So I sent it to the trafficker. After receiving the, receiving the money, he did not release me. He took me to Tripoli, where Chinidu, or Chinidu was put up with other forced sex workers. For a year and a half, she was held against her will as a forced sex worker in Libya before she managed to escape and ended up in a detention center after being intercepted by Libyan authorities in the Mediterranean. Chinadu is one of the many victims of trafficking. Young women and children are particularly the target in Nigeria, where more than 8 out of 10, that's 83%, of the 1,470 rescued trafficking victims in 2021 were female, according to data from its National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP. Traffickers mainly target women. Whilst it, is, whilst it is easier for men to travel on their own, women rely more on middlemen to help them identify opportunities abroad and to travel the, and to arrange the travel. The recruitment of these young women destined to be forced sex workers often follows the abuse of their religious and cultural beliefs. Curses or juju are used to bind the women to their trafficker to ensure that they don't run away 
or try to escape them. There's a strong belief in the traditions and the culture of the land, and traffickers use these to manipulate these victims by taking oaths just before they leave the country. The victims are made to put a lot of curses on themselves, explain Ayo Amen Edie, a counter-trafficking officer at IOM Benin. If they get to Europe or to any country, no matter what the challenges are, they cannot run away whenever they remember these curses or oaths they've done before leaving their country. These traffickers are aware of this and they use it to manipulate their victims. It was in Libya where Chinedu, Chinedu met staff from the, from the International Organization for Migration, IOM, who assisted stranded migrants to return to their home countries from immigration detention centers. A day after getting there, I met one man. He was from, from IOM. He gave us papers to fill out. They also brought clothes, shoes, medicine for us at the prison. Chinedu spent one week in the, in the detention center before IOM helped her return to Nigeria where she is building her life. A study by IOM's Knowledge Management Hub found that emotional challenges due to negative experiences during their trafficking journey included gender-based violence or forced prostitution acted as a barrier, toward, barrier towards reintegration, of, in re, reintegration for women. Let me read that again. A study by IOM's Knowledge Management Hub found that emotional challenges due to negative experiences during their trafficking journey, including gender-based violence or forced prostitution, acted as a barrier towards reintegration for women. Starting again was not easy for Chinedu. I didn't go out. I was always inside. I was just on my own until I was able to get over the whole thing. She describes her mental state when she first got back. I was ashamed. Coming back to start all over again, what I thought I had done before, coming to repeat, what I do now, this work, I already spent over two years before traveling to Libya, then coming back again to spend one extra year so it was like I was going back. It was not easy. Many women interviewed for the study were faced with exclusion from, their, from the community and from their families. Chinedu was met with anger and incomprehension when she returned to her family home. Her mother was angry for having warned her not to go. She was against it. I was the, I was the one that persuaded her, that forced her to go, Chinedu says. Now she's wasted her whole savings, her money and the rest. And still I could not get to Europe. My younger sister was laughing at me. With the help of the IOM's Assisted Voluntary Return and Reintegration Program, Shinadu bought a sewing machine, rented a shop, and reestablished herself as a seamstress, which allows her to provide for herself, for herself, as well as for her younger sister to go to school. The names have been changed to protect the identity of the of Chinadu, the person's story. So, you know. What I'd like to say is, we treat people with such disdain. We treat people with such harshness and cruelty. Yes, because we don't understand their story. Why do we need to understand their story to understand that if someone needs help, we just need to support them? You don't have to agree with them. We just need to support them. And so this is very sad. What happens is we, we oftentimes we judge people based on their experiences. We marginalize and disenfranchise people. And then later we hear the story and we're like, oh my goodness, that's what they went through? Because you don't know people's story. And sometimes the, the very persons who go through something, like she said, she was so ashamed. She was already punishing herself. She didn't need anybody else punishing her. She was already punishing herself. And so sometimes people go through harsh realities and they don't necessarily want to tell the story. They just wish they could get some help because telling the story further exacerbate the pain, further hurts, you know? So we ought to, 
it's just sad that people have to go through these things because of mankind trafficking people and there's so there's so much that people have to go through and women and children have to go through so much sometimes and i'm not saying that men don't go through it too but women and children or women and our children are so traumatized let us support them even if we don't understand their story if even if we've not been told the story if someone looks like they need help if someone is struggling can we help them like I hear the debate about the student student loan debt um, support. And I'm hearing people, even people who are Christians, going against it. No, if every day you get up and you tell people Jesus paid it all, Jesus paid it all, are you saying that Jesus should not have paid the debt for people who are sinning? Are you saying that Jesus should not pay the debt for people who you think are sinning intentionally? And there, there was one person that said one day, what do you call it? Prom prom um, presumptuous sin. Should Jesus not have not have to pay it all for, for those who commit presumptuous sins? Who are we to judge? Who are we to judge? Aren't we supposed to be christian-minded where we want to help and support people isn't quality of life what we wish for people how is it that we can go on the street and see someone who's homeless and dirty and our heart softens for them but we can't see someone who's trying and see that they need help and help them too is it that because you look like you're trying or you look like you're surviving you should suffer is that it don't we don't we all have evidence of how challenging this life can be don't we who's not having a tough time at something wouldn't you like to be helped with that something would you wouldn't you like to get help for that something with that something that you challenge that you're challenged with so maybe today is not for you maybe today is not the day you get your your support but why should someone else not get theirs hmm Aren't we all supposed to be our brothers and sisters keepers? What does that mean to us? They have to look a certain way to get it. They have to act a certain way. They have to they have to prove themselves they, themselves a victim to get your support. Are you someone who are you a Christian who your brotherly love and being a brotherly keeper is only for someone who's a victim? Is that it? Are you only compassionate towards victims? Is is that the limit of your compassion? And empathy I'm just I'm just asking I'm just asking we all need to do better we all need to do better these people have gone through tra being trafficked and know they're going to have to deal with stigma and rejection can we be kinder can we be kinder that's it for today y'all I'm not seeking to judge anyone I'm just asking questions and you know share my thoughts that's all i'm not trying to judge you or anything like that thank you for listening to you and me radio i'm dj kelly and stay tuned for more have a great day goodbye